All right, this uh, next poem is Three Hoots, Nothing More. Um, you know, I did not grow up uh, surrounded by uh, a stadium's worth of gifted, passionate, active, deep-rooted native storytellers. You know, I grew up surrounded by a lot of silence. I grew up surrounded by uh, a lot of native voices or native storytelling that had been uh, sidetracked, uh, kind of severely sidetracked by a lot of alcoholism and drugs and kind of trauma. And uh, that produced a lot of silence in myself. And uh, I didn't know it, but I kind of was starving for access to that stadium's worth of powerful and passionate native storytellers. And uh, as luck would have it, uh, just about when I turned 21 and became old enough to uh, duck into a bar myself and legally grab a beer, I kind of stumbled into uh, those native storytellers. And uh, I think a lot of you might be familiar with that uh, kind of critical, beautiful juncture point in my own uh, story by now. But uh, to kind of uh, I guess jump around and play in it a little bit like uh, you know a, a, a happy dog in some uh, good foamy delicious ocean water <laughs> I might just say that uh, I met a lot of natives who were uh, transformed into beautiful storytellers because of their uh, participation in our traditional culture. And uh, our traditional culture essentially, among many other things, inspires people to become beautiful storytellers. Uh, and man, I met a lot of them. I met a lot of elders. I met a lot of, I always like to emphasize, you know, I met a lot of kind of kooky, imperfect, non-ideal, uh, strange duck, raw, ordinary, and real uh, relatives who 100% qualified as uh, beautiful, inspired native storytellers. And I think my young self kind of uh, comprehended the teaching uh, inside of that very early on. And that was uh, that uh, the sacred was not some uh, elect property that uh, belonged only to uh, those with the most money or those with the, the most nicely combed hair or those who uh, managed to successfully present themselves as the most shiny and together human uh, in their neighborhood. But instead, uh, the sacred was uh, a birthright of all. And no matter how funky or funny we looked, or no matter what shape our past 
had or uh, how big a belly we had or how cross-eyed we were or how hurt we were or how lost we were. Uh, the sacred uh, belong to us all was a innate part of the holy existence of us all and uh, this is beautiful every time I think about it and uh, very very beautiful I think there's something there there is a there's a seed there that we all should uh, you know crack between our teeth and swallow and pray uh, grows into something uh, big and beautiful and ancient and life supporting and uh, maybe even transcendent inside our own uh, bellies and bodies and beings and that's the great truth that uh, all of us human beings uh, are sacred are connected to uh, the divine and uh, to maybe kind of circle back we're all meant to be uh, beautiful storytellers because we're all composed of stories our past is this uh, living uh, ornate animated dreamlike sculpture of stories trailing behind us and uh, alive in the central shrine of our souls and psyches and so we should be kind of poking each other in the ribs and we should be kind of uh, encouraging each other and making each other laugh and making sure we find some time in our days to tell good, deep, rich, long, heartfelt stories to not just our companions and our families and our loved ones, but uh, everyone who's in our community, everyone who's kind of in our everyday lives. And we should be uh, actively regenerating uh, the sacred culture of storytelling amongst uh, our relatives here in the modern world uh, so that we can also uh, restore and regenerate all those parts of the human soul that uh, find their, 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 their sweet, meaningful, purposeful, juicy, poetic, shining life. Uh, with, with, with everything that comes with being a storytelling creature, which we all are, and which our uh, Indian people have never lost their fundamental connection to uh, the reality of and of which our Indian people have never lost our uh, closeness to uh, we've never lost our closeness to that piece of ourselves and that piece of our nature so you know this poem is uh, a little story and uh, maybe I'll read it now. Three hoots, nothing more. I heard an owl hoot three times the day John Burt died. It was morning time. And with the first hoot, I looked out the empty window where it came from and saw nothing. Then it happened twice more. Owl hoots from an empty window. My dad said he was in his prison cell in South Dakota and he heard three hoots, just three and nothing more. Later that week, he read about a cousin's passing in the local newspaper. He included this story 
in one of the letters he sent me. It was proof, unconquerable, our ways lived on. Um, I think as you have gathered, I could probably uh, ramble on with a big smile on my face for quite a bit longer about the, the joyous and deep and unkillable uh, Indian medicine of good storytelling. But I uh, think I might stop myself there and uh, just say to make sure you keep your ears open uh, to those uh, communications from the owls and our other relatives. We're surrounded by messengers and our lives are better when we know how to listen to them. Thank you, relatives.